Sonic. Green Hill Champ since 1991. Poning KG and Afune since 2016. But. We'll get to that. That's too low. And now it's stuck. Bear with me, Jordan. Yeah. So. Probably, yeah. This is a failed kickstart to get the chair up and running. Might be it. Yeah, it's close enough. Even though it isn't. So yeah, we're talking about Kickstarter. As I've been teasing for pretty much uh, through the sauna. For most of the week. Right, finally got it in place. I only do this so I can actually show you the t-shirt because, you know, I'm an idiot. So, yeah, we'll get to this in a bit. First up in what the hell's going on with Kickstarter, uh, Alison Road. <coughs> if you remember, this was the, the demo that showed up. Uh, within a few months of the announcement that uh, Kojima was basically all but done at Konami, and the PT demo disappeared, leaving all hope of Silent Hills getting done. <coughs> so they released this <coughs> level. It was clearly inspired by uh, PT, because it was a very similarly designed house, and you know, there was a a lot of creepy, <clears throat> not creepiness in it, as you'd expect. So the Kickstarter had already raised, I think, somewhere in the region of one hundred and forty-six thousand pounds. Of which they were trying to get 250,000. Bear in mind though that this was only about halfway through the actual duration of the campaign. And if you look at most Kickstarters, you know, you see a big spike at the top, somewhat of a lull in the middle, and then a big spike towards the end because people will go, I'll back it within the last 48 hours because <clears throat> I need to work out whether I've got enough money or whether the there's enough chance that the actual project will happen. But the developers, Lilith, cancelled it because <clears throat> they announced that Team 17, the guys that published the Worms games, and uh, quite a few other indie things that I can think of, uh, overruled, I've seen that at demo shows, uh, but a few, a few, a fair few other games stepped in and offered a publishing deal, and then a couple of weeks back, right before E3, the Twitter account for the studios said simply this: "Sadly, Allison Road had to be cancelled. Thanks for your support, and very sad it came to this." Um, <clears throat> eventually, a longer statement was put out on Facebook saying, After long consideration between Team 17 and ourselves, we've reached a mutual agreement to end our collaboration on publishing it under Team 17's games label. Sometimes things pan out differently than expected, as game development and publishing have so many layers of complexity. We'd like to thank everyone for their support throughout. It has and will always be appreciated. And then in a statement to Video Game, or VG247, uh, Team17 said, After a long consideration between Lilith owner Chris Kessler and ourselves, notice any trend here. We've reached a mutual agreement to end our collaboration on publishing Alison Road on Team17's games label. So pretty much the first sentence is, 
somebody copied stuff on Microsoft and copy pasted the different words in. <clears throat> this is the bit that's actually different. We love the concept and value Chris's talent highly, but sometimes things pan out differently than expected, as game development and publishing are so many layers of complexity. Again, copy paste. The whole team here wish the best to Chris on his current and future projects, of which, being a, before being a business partner, we are also a fan. The great thing about all this is there is no actual reason as to why this was cancelled given and it's been since a uh, roughly a week since all this has happened and i have not seen any news as clarification as to why this has happened so that so that's a case of a kickstarter that got cancelled because it was actually going to get published anyway but then cancelled with no reason given don't worry there is a positive one eventually here, but the problem is it's got a very similar story to Allison Road. <clears throat> Let's just hope that one actually happens. But before we get to that one, and before we get to... <laughs> next, we go to uh, re-roll. So, <clears throat> a couple of years back... Uh, a couple of developers from Assassin's Creed and Far Cry games announced Reroll, which was a survival action RPG that would use drones to map out the entire planet. This game has now been cancelled, by the way. Um, <clears throat> an email was basically sent to... This, was, uh, this got posted on Reddit. An email was sent to backers explaining that the developer... Pixiel, P-I-X-Y-U-L, uh, was unable to secure enough funding for the ambitious project. But apparently not for lack of trying, as they were basically searching high and low to secure capital. Um, we had high hopes to secure the necessary funds to achieve our final goal. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the money raised with the campaign, plus our personal investments, were not enough to develop it on our own. We invested everything in building up the elements to pitch the project to potential partners. So one publisher was on the cusp of putting enough money into it to actually make it a AAA game. But <clears throat> it didn't happen. Talks were well in advance with two very different publishers. One wanted to invest way more money than we budgeted and wanted to make it a AAA. The other was interested but not willing to invest the amount that was planned. After months of discussions, both stopped the procedures for very different reasons. One decided to invest and focus on their own properties. Um, now I'm trying to work out what that might be. Uh, considering we didn't see any original games from EA, it could be that. The other, after a difficult fiscal year, decided to focus on smaller budget games. That sounds Nintendo. Possibly. I don't know. None of, it's never said. I'm just trying to work out what it is literally on the fly here. Even if a, uh, we were crushed, even if all was done properly and within respect, it was a hard blow. The worst apparently rejection came later when Pixie Yule, Um... An entertainment partner that offered a verbal agreement to back the project. Only the no contract never came and the deal was pulled off the table with no explanation why. You know, they gave it the best shot and they're disappointed. Some of you may be disappointed and even pissed. We should have been better at communicating our progress. Not to give excuses, but we were caught in the process with the potential partners that wish we stayed silent on our progress. And that's the issue with trying to pitch something on Kickstarter with the whole aspect of looking for further investment. You know, if you can't make the money 
within the means of what you've got, there's always a problem. Which is now why I'm bloody petrified that I back Shenmue 3. Because Sony. I should have thought this through. Um, now, to give back to those who backed um, the re-roll Kickstarter, or crowdfunding, I think it was on Kickstarter, they're gifting Steam Early Access copies of its other game, BIOS. The thing is, BIOS is available to anyone, uh, this is before the Steam sale, which is on right now, by the way, for $15 or £11. Some people invest in order to actually get a copy of the game, it was a minimum of $20, and some people even uh, funded as much as $275. And the developer, all the, the best that the developer can do for that $275 is give, is give people a $15 game. This is why planning needs to be done properly. Um, I don't know whether he's doing one this month, but uh, just a bit of advice to anybody that is thinking of kickstarting and wanting to know what to do and what not to do, but more what not to do. Um, Dan's Gaming on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Dan's Gaming. Normally, at the like the end of every month, he goes through the Kickstarter video game projects and basically, you know, plays them on stream and gives a critical analysis of them. So, you know, not all of them are like, "What the hell is this?" You know, this is atrocious. But quite a lot of them are, because some of the pitches are just. Uh, but then some of them are actually pretty good looking. You know, and he puts the link out in the chat for people to uh, have a look at themselves if they want to. Um, so, yeah, if you are thinking about a project, probably look for uh, one of those. If it, It's normally at the end of every month that he, sometimes, he does them that I've seen. But... Uh, there should be some archived. I think the last one he did may have been the end of May. Or no, sorry, no, it wouldn't have been the end of May. Uh, end of April. It might still be in Twitch archives, but I'm not sure. Or 90 days, so it should just about be. So, uh, go find it. You know, it's, uh, it's at least like six hours worth of, you know, scouring through the stuff. And some of them, it's like, you know, looking at it, because I wouldn't normally look at these things. I only sort of, being the cynic that I am, I go for the things that really whet my appetite or really, really gets the game press interested. Um, you know, it was a success. Ironically, it was a success of Mighty Number no. Nine that made me interested in some of these Kickstarters. You know, uh, I have got a code for the E3 demo of Bloodstained. I haven't been able to play it yet, because it's this computer. But eventually I will be. And all I've seen from that so far, uh, from Jim Sterling's video, is that it looks pretty good. It looks like a old school Castlevania game, except obviously not with a Castlevania license. So that looks promising. Then again, people said that about Mighty Number no. 9. But before we get to that, I'm teasing you. I keep teasing you, ladies and gentlemen. And dogs. Because, you know, secret life of pet. Uh, Fable Fortune. Um, is... Had its Kickstarter cancelled, but will be happening anyway. 
Um, but Flaming Fowl Studios, the guys that are basically the remnants of what's left from Lionhead, um, started the Fable Fortune Kickstarter with the blessing of Microsoft. Uh, but, you know, it really wasn't doing too well because it, it was looking for a quarter of a million pounds and was only on about 59,000 or so. But, uh, you know, I think that was with possibly 10 days or something to go. Not, I'm not entirely sure, but, you know, if the funding was looking not very good. <clears throat> However, uh, they've announced that they've successfully secured additional development funding, which alongside a personal investment means they can continue to work on the game. No news as that, no, no announcement as to where this funding's actually from. Um, but they're going to focus on a closed beta build, but the alpha remains available, so basically all the Kickstarter people that did back it at the time will get access to the closed beta. Even though, obviously, they haven't even paid them money, which is, that's a nice move, I will say. Um, and it will be launching on Steam eventually. Because I don't know where it got on green light and through that stuff, but it will be coming to PC, certainly. So that's... At, le at least that's somewhat of a positive thing. Then again, as I say, the funding thing. I mean, if it's secured funding and it's got it, good. But if it hasn't, then what's going on, son? And then we get to Inafune. So... It starts roughly this time last week that the uh, reviews came out for the game. And the reviews were, it's very average. For something that got all the money that it did, <clears throat> it's very, very average. But you see... This is where the twists start. Not in a good way. So, keep in mind, these, rev these game writers have already received the code and have been reviewing it. Probably, for the, probably those that reviewed it were the ones that didn't go to E3 or got it when they come back from E3. Whatever. Because if the reviews came out Sunday, they've had to have been playing it either before E3, before they went out, or somehow during E3, I guess. Well, that'd be, t that'd be difficult, because, you know, PS4s and Xbox Ones aren't entirely travelable, unless you've got the right kit. But whatever. Kickstarter backers were going... None of us has received the codes for this. Why have the press got the codes first? So yeah, the whole idea is Kickstarter backers were going to get their codes first for the thing. Um, and the other interesting fact is... Some people have been sent codes that didn't even work. Or sent codes, uh, if they have like the PC one, they got sent a Wii U code. <clears throat> but it gets better. The 360 edition of uh, the 360 version of Mighty Number no. 9 has been delayed. I guess for regionalization issues or something. Um, you know, the developer on Kickstarter said people should be receiving emails, but there may be a delay on console, particularly on PlayStation platforms as well. 
Apparently, oh, because the Xbox 360 thing is a certification bug found in the final round of testing. So why did it get sent out before it was being tested to be released as a game? Oh. They've already resubmitted the build and expect it to go gold within a few days. For those that chose the platform, now for the backers who chose that platform, they're getting Steam keys so that users are not left behind on release day. Once the Xbox 360 version, we'll send out those codes ASAP. That, keep that in mind as well. People are getting their Kickstarter, you're getting it first codes, on the same day, and possibly the same time, as you could buy it outright. And it gets worse. Um, some of the other people in the comments below this uh, Kickstarter post are pretty interesting. Somebody here is saying that I uh, got codes for DLC but not for main game. The only other game related thing on my Humble Bundle account is the demo. Excellent work here, guys. No physical rewards, no game, just DLC. 10 out of 10, we're back again. Um, as it says, some people have not had their codes for the PlayStation versions. Uh, but there's also complaints about <clears throat> no physical awards yet either. So yeah, the game's out, and people haven't got all their rewards yet. Despite the fact they said they were coming first. So, as another person says, if you got PS3 code, you also got a PS4 and PS Vita code. Because of, you know, cross-play. And now, if you've got the 360 code, you also get a PC code because of the issues that they've got with the, the bug. But if you bought a Wii U or a 3DS code... You only get it for that platform, you know, separately. If you want a 3DS one, you'll have to buy it outright. There's no cross-play. Which there is for quite a few of the games that there is anyway, so. But then on top of that, there are reports of people that got their Wii U codes and started playing the game. And literally the game is that messed up. It breaks the Wii U console. Or as it's known in the terms, the console's bricked. The console's dead. It can't be used for anything else because this game has apparently completely destroyed it. On top of that, if by chance you do finish the game... The end credits of this game, in full, are 3 hours and 48 minutes long. No. You're not mishearing me. The actual credits of this game are 228 minutes. I think... Even the like extended version of Batman vs. Superman may be shorter than the credits to Mighty Number no. 9. Then again, I don't know about that because there's still no release date as to whenever that hell is coming out. Which I'd like to know, Warner Brothers. Rather than, oh, we expect it to come out soon. Um, and then, the perfect thing. Sonic the Hedgehog has his own Twitter. It's sort of like, unofficially sort of Team Sonic, from what I can tell. But yeah, basically it's got a reputation for troll posts. This is an official, recognised, you know, by Sega... Sonic the Hager, so Sonic the Hedgehog 
Sonic the Sega, yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter account. And the majority of the tweets are troll ones. Is this just like Sega being like twats or something? I don't know. But, I mean, uh, <laughs> bloody, uh, Sonic is there doing like the shruggy sort of, sort of, thing. And the tweet simply says, congrats on the launch, Mighty Number no. 9. It's better than nothing. Which, in context, is pretty interesting as well. Because in a launch Twitch stream that went live last week, that's basically, you know, for all the people that... For all the people that hated on Mighty Number no. 9, the critics and, you know, the fans that were like, you know, I didn't, I don't like this. He simply responded through um, Ben Judd, his translator, who also is the translator for Eager from uh, Bloodstained Symphony of the Night, ironically. Well, no, not Bloodstained Symphony of the Night. But, you know, the Bloodstained Kickstarter... Castlevania S game, whatever. Inafune basically said, "Well, it's better than nothing." Because, yeah. Keep in mind, this game got four million dollars of Kickstarter funding. Oh, that's interesting. So apparently, it isn't. It isn't actually Inafune that said it. It was just that's how Judd translated it. And basically, the, what he actually said was, I want to word this in a way to explain some of the issues that come with trying to make a game of this size on multiple platforms. I'm kind of loath to say this, because it's going to sound like an excuse and I don't want to make excuses. I own all the problems that came with this game, and if you want to hurl insults at me, it's totally my fault. I'm the key creator, I will own that responsibility. So ba basically that's why he said it's better than nothing. And that apparently four, wow, four million was 60% of the budget for Mighty Number no. 9. And creating ten different versions hurt the project. Congratulations. That's why you shouldn't do so many bloody versions. Because I'm now trying to think. You've got... Sony, which should be a cross-platform code anyway. You've got 360 and 1, so that's 5. PC, Wii U, 3DS. Obviously not Wii, because that's not... Can't work out what the other two are, like mobile or something? I don't even know. But yeah, there's a lot of... But then, of course, ironic, of course, because Sonic saying, you know, at least it's better than nothing, considering Sonic had Sonic Boom, and Sonic Boom, Fire and Ice, get delayed by a whole year. And it still isn't out yet. I think it's coming out, like, September or October this year for the 3DS. People have gone, you know, and that ironic. Um... I just think it's beautiful, though, that Sega's actually openly trolling people. You know. <laughs> that would be like the equivalent of Microsoft going, you didn't want Windows 10 installed on your computer? You know. Everybody knows that everybody wants Windows 10 on their computer. Especially if 80% of the programs that they have will not run on Windows 10. It's perfect. Um, but yeah, the, the thing is, people actually took 
the concept video from the original Kickstarter pitch from a few years back. And some would argue that that looks like a better game visualized or in the visual sense than the current iteration does. So basically it's done a Ubisoft and also had a downgrade. Um, the other issues, the console versions, both PS4 and Xbox One have performance issues. Uh, then also the V-Sync you know, there is the ability to be able to turn, well, in theory, there is the ability to turn V-Sync on and off. Uh, because basically, both the games have a heck of a lot of screen tearing. As in, the pitch is sort of not fluid, it's a bit juddery at quite a lot of places. In fact, in some levels, it's it's very bad. And V-Sync, if you turn V-Sync off, sometimes that can help it. The thing is, on the PS4 and Xbox One versions, you turn it off, you go back into the menu, and it's automatically turned on. So yeah, the ability to actually control V-Sync doesn't work at minute at launch. Or, uh, I shouldn't say at the minute, it might have been patched by now. But then again, it probably won't have. But at least, yeah, on launch day, you had a functionality of the game not working properly. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other tech problems as well under the hood for the, at least the various console platforms that they've done. There's no word, official word, on whether the Wii U version is basically killing off consoles. And how the PC version runs, but uh, yeah, it's it's been a pretty interesting week for Kickstarter. So you know, I wonder how many Kickstarters have launched this week, or launched in the past seven, or well, let's say two weeks since E3, and then after seeing all these stories about. One's being cancelled and getting additional funding. One's being uh, funded and then getting cancelled. Ones that were cancelled during funding and then cancelled or outright because funding that was promised to them never came. And then the game that got funded, which also had personal funding, that came out in such a manner that people were not impressed with it whether it be reviewers or fans you know and delivered in a manner which has been very sloppily done um yeah I should really finish this video by like saying if you uh, donate at least one cent in the imaginary box beside me even though where that's probably where all the uh, the stuff is listed for uh, yeah what your next video is or however you do it on your platform of choice you know perhaps there'll be a bonus like you um, you get a free imaginary coin. Look. It's beautiful. You can even see through it. It is that magical. Actually thinking about it. You could probably do it like that. And turn it into a monocle. Meh.